corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Intel has told us there are at least seven. Okay, I already see one. Give me. Okay. They're the same picture. This is the card, this is the track, and this is the type of avoidance skills you need at Hockenheim. Jesus. First race of the day, there we are. We're starting in P8 with a 140.7. Not a bad lap, but looking up ahead, you can see that we're basically a second behind the pole sitter, which is not uh, the difference that I like to see between myself and P1. Getting into the race, 15 laps of Hockenheim ring, going to lose a position right away to Dolly, almost losing another one to P20, who goes around the outside into the first corner. We end up gaining like five or six there. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Marcin looking to go around the outside into turn one. Doesn't really work out for him. Car number two not able to avoid it. Dolly ships it straight through everybody, and uh, we pick up four positions from that. We really don't even lose that much speed at all either, so the guy behind us wasn't able to take complete advantage of that, and he will stay behind us just barely as we come through corner two, actually making very slight contact with him there, and uh, we're able to pull away, taking the racing line. Meanwhile, he has a very compromised run, and he's now side by side with Juan behind us. So we have about a second gap to him behind us, which is nice, relieving the pressure into the hairpin for the first time, which is very often where you will see death on lap one. Luckily, we shouldn't be involved in any here. We have a little bit of space to Alexander ahead of us, about half of a second at the moment. Should close that up upon the exit of this corner. And taking a look back to the midfield, and this is the type of death into the hairpin that I was referencing. So that's Javier, car number 13, up at the front. Going to get absolutely shafted by 18 from about a second back. Sorry, Ends up taking sorry. out somebody else there. Fuck, bro, really? Then this guy dies. What the fuck are you looking for? Like I said in the last video about Hockenheim, it is very much a case of getting around the first lap, and then from there, the race is actually, most of the time, relatively calm. And we find ourselves now in P5, chasing down P4, who is completely whiffing the apex there. That should give us a good opportunity into the carousel. Gonna tease up the inside, just try and mind punt him a little bit, which I think we do successfully. However, we kind of mind punt ourselves a little bit there as well, and really just end up losing time to Nicholas behind, who is closing up that gap that was previously at about a second. The guy ahead swerving like mad as we cross onto lap number two, chasing him down. We're still within slipstream range. This is a good spot to be. If we could keep about three tenths, get a good run out of the chicane onto the parabolica straight, whatever you want to call that. Uh, we should have an opportunity into the hairpin, so looking for a good exit here. Looks like we may have actually lost some time initially going through that chicane, and though we should gain some speed back due to the slipstream, really low likelihood that we're able to make a move into the hairpin. Nicholas now 7 tenths behind us, an indicator that he's slowly gaining a little bit of time on us. Uh, you can see that 7 tenths staying there as we gain a ton of speed as he is also soaking up our slipstream. Into the hairpin, car ahead slides, slides out even more, and we just barely manage to nip underneath him. Uh, you can see him almost catch it, and then I think he gets on the throttle again, and it turns itself around very close to our car. Uh, we do lose a bit of time from that. I think Nicholas was a little bit better prepared for that by the time he came around that corner, so that ends up giving him a little bit of a better run than us. He's now just about half of a second behind us, gaining about three tenths through the hairpin. We need to make uh, some sort of separation happen here. He has kind of constantly been gaining on us through the last lap. However, we do have clean air now, so that could be good or bad. We do not have the slipstream, but if I'm able to nail a few lines, maybe a couple of laps, I could separate myself enough from Nicholas so that he no longer has the slipstream. However, as it stands, he is slowly gaining on us all of the way through this sector of the, uh, of, of the track. And uh, that's a bad sign because this is really where I need to be pulling away from him. There's not really an opportunity for me to pull away from him in the first sector, especially with that massive parabolica slash straight where he will just gain a bunch of time from slipstream. We do separate ourselves completely from car number 11 as we cross onto lap number three. So it kind of becomes a two horse battle for P4 here with uh, Nicholas hawking us down. Horrible run through the first corner by myself, very reserved. And at this point, I kind of decided, okay, Nicholas definitely got a better run than me. Maybe we just let him through up the inside. We'll tuck behind, try not to compromise either of our runs onto the straight uh, in an attempt to keep P6 where he is at. And I figured that, you know, if I'm faster than this guy, I now have the slipstream as well. I'm not really under any pressure. I should be able to get past him at some point. Not right now. I actually lift going down Parabolica. I want to give him some time to settle in. And uh, hopefully we can pull away from these guys behind. 
so that there is enough space for me to really kind of risk some, or not, I don't want to say risk, but there is enough space for me to attempt to make a move and uh, just not worry about anybody flying up from behind and rear-ending me into any of these words, which seems to happen quite a lot on this track. Arriving at the left-hander in front of this stadium and Nicholas uh, going pretty deep here and uh, cutting back, which at this point I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe I should have stayed in front and just like fully pushed. Uh, but there's still time to to um, trust this guy and earn his trust, even behind about half of a second at this point. So we are slowing down a bit, um, partially due to that slide that Nicholas had. He's just kind of being a bit loose through some of these corners, but he just got the position. If I really want to run away with him, I have to give him more than, you know, a couple of corners to prove that he has pace. And I think that this would end up proving to be the correct decision. Coming up to round out lap number three, start lap number four. Still about half of a second to Avon behind us, which was a bit concerning, but I know that we're going to have the slipstream on the uh, long straight this time, so Avon shouldn't really be able to catch us anywhere there. A good run through here would not hurt either. However, it's not going to be a great run. We actually lose time to Nicholas and, uh, and Avon as well, as they both get very solid runs through there. Now, skipping ahead a few corners later, this is after the hairpin. Uh, same corner he went deep on last lap, where he kind of, yeah, same thing. Basically, the exact same thing happens here. However, car number 11 behind Avon getting a little bit of oversteer, and that kind of removes him from the situation currently. There's definitely opportunity for him to catch up. He loses a couple of tents there, which could be pretty cru crucial as we are inching towards Nicholas at the same time. We've got him within two tents, so uh, it's just enough of a gap now that if I did want to go for a move, you know, this would probably be the time. However, coming through the carousel, just really not a great run from myself. I entered a bit too narrow there, exited a bit too narrow as well, so never really got to open up my car all that much. Um, Avon behind is slowly falling back though, which is nice. I'm not great at corner number one, which is pretty awful because it kind of feeds into some of the best overtaking opportunities on this track. Very thankful to have a little bit of a gap behind me, and this could be an opportunity for a move onto the straight, but I mean, never mind. Terrible run through corner number one. Same thing as last time, losing time both to Avon and Nicholas up ahead. And I kind of just decided, all right, I'm gonna sit here and we'll see what happens. By the time the final lap comes around, we're in the exact same position, four tenths behind Nicholas, who was driving a fantastic race with no slipstream. He was very consistent, wasn't really making any mistakes past those couple of uh, times he went deep through that corner that I showed. And he would round it out all of the way to the end, keeping that same gap weren't able to make use of the slipstream. I think it was really a skill issue on my part. So crossing the line for P5, he claims P4 up ahead of us. And looking back at it, I may have made, I mean, I don't think it was the wrong decision to let him through. I think I could have made a pass, but obviously there were other options. I could have backed him up into car 11 or uh, just tried to defend for that whole race. I think our pace was kind of similar. Crossing the line in P5, 4240 is the I rating now, gaining a little bit of safety rating too, which always helps uh, just kind of staying, keeping my head above water there. Lap time wise, I mean, we're still not where we want to be. The fastest guy's running seven, seven tenths faster than us. Next race, and look who is ahead of us. It's Nicholas from last race. So he is starting in P8, and I am starting in P9 right behind him. Massively off the pace of the leaders this race, over a second to the pole sitter. It's, it's depressing. It's a little bit depressing that I just never found that pace, and I never got my launch correct. They dust me immediately. Uh, car number 16 then finds his way up my inside coming through the first corner it's almost identical to last race half of or not half but there's i mean there's people going all over the place and uh now we're under an immense amount of pressure taking a look back at that real quick marcin same driver from last race with the same driver ahead of him uh, that yellow and orange car these guys make contact marcin is looking up the inside making it a three wide situation into turn one on lap one not a great decision his teammate flings across the track xavi sierra really <laughs> nothing he could do about that one as the guy just kind of drives right in front of him he manages to rejoin pretty nicely we just about find ourselves like four wide as joey is entering the situation behind us we're losing positions on the inside joey decides to uh, not make that happen great decision by him we go around the outside of the blue car behind who runs into shavi or shavi runs into him here's shavi's view and you can kind of make up your mind about this shavi is definitely like He's barely alongside and 10 kind of turns in on to him. But uh, I mean, it was still a very optimistic look from Shabby. This guy's view is hilarious. I mean, this guy is just going backwards, releasing, not even trying to break. I think he was trying to hit Shabby again. I don't know what was going on there. We survive all of that. Uh, still in 
or actually in P8. So we moved up one position from all of that, which is great. We typically lose positions on start. Two cars ahead of us. Guy locks up. I think that's Nicholas actually and scares the other guy pushing him wide. We kind of settle behind car number 13 here. It looks like they may go side by side up ahead of us. And we're actually going to make that um, two by two as we look up the inside of car number 13. This is Jesper Groot into the stadium section or the, sa the section with the stadium that's watching. And here is a view, if you were in that stadium, of me backing out and giving Jesper that position back or uh, at least settling back into my position. Getting a really good run through the next corner, though. Not quite enough to get alongside, so I'm going to stay behind and just focus on my exit. Look for a potential move into the hairpin. Jesper, not the greatest run. He's on the outside. I'm diving up the inside into the hairpin. He allows the space. It looks like Joey might follow us through side by side with Jesper. However, the inside disallows you having like the best exit, uh, so Jesper is able to maintain that position ahead of Joey. We do move up into P7 now, chasing down car number 16, I think that is, who actually started one position behind us in P10, so I think that we should be able to have pace. Nicholas two cars ahead as we cross onto lap number two, and uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to catch Nicholas from this type of gap. I would really have to put in some monster laps. As we head towards corner number two, Jesper behind us still with Slipstream, but it looks like he might be under attack from Joey watching the relative, and it looks like they're side by side. Joey actually goes ahead momentarily, and it looks like he stays there. They definitely lose a bit of time, which tends to happen when you go too wide, especially through a chicane, but Joey does make that move up the inside. Jesper kind of gets Getting shoved wide a little bit fair racing and uh, 14 is going to be able to swoop alongside Jesper actually get good enough of a run that it looks like he's going to move ahead of Jesper and they're gonna tuck into a little like train of three look how close they are going down parabolica part number 14 with a massive slingshot here he has a ton of speed alongside joey before the braking zone and it looks like he's going to go for the move into the hairpin joey going around the outside you can make this work if you get good enough of an exit but it looks like he goes a bit deep on the exit so he's not able to get the power down as early as he would have liked car number 13 now directly behind joey this is jesper probably looking to get one of those positions back as he just lost both of them and joey going up the inside into the section with the stadium Car number 14 going deep, allowing space. Looks like he might lose a position to Jesper. Not quite. He's going to tuck back in line and... Uh Joey makes his way through. So, uh, Dynaco McQueen behind him, and it looks like there's like a train of five of them now, with Marcim being one of those cars in there. Lap number three comes around. We've kind of spread out a little bit. Two seconds to Joey behind from all of that fighting, and we are following Patrick still. We're within a second. He does not get a great run into the hairpin. That should allow us potentially to make a move here. Looking around the outside initially, that was never going to happen. So, tucking to the inside for the next corner, and uh, we're side by side. Is he going to give us the space? Even better. He's going to lift off and tuck in behind us so we move ahead of him into p6 great place to be as uh, i think i'm car number nine this one can't be upset with that type of position nicholas 2.6 seconds ahead at this point we did lose a little bit of time to joey who is making his way towards us but uh we have patrick between us now so we should be safe from that heathen and uh co coming to round this lap out it's really just going to be about separating ourselves from patrick which i honestly wasn't too worried about I felt like I had pace over him and as the race went on it would kind of display that in fact we did have pace lap number 11 quite the gap has opened up behind Joey is still behind Patrick looking to make a move and uh, this could be the lap for him as Patrick does not get a great run through the hairpin slowing down quite a bit there not quite sure what happened Maybe he carried a bit too much speed in and just rode the brakes a little bit longer than he necessarily needed to. Either way, Joey is right on his ass heading into the section with the stadium, and he's going to look up the inside, braking slightly later, not committing fully to that as he wasn't alongside. Smart back out from him there. Car number 14 following Joey throughout this entire race, and at this point, they kind of separated themselves from the other people who were attached to their group, so it, it's pretty much a battle here for P7, just between the three of them. We're going to hop on board with Joey for a lap or two as as he chases down Patrick in pursuit of P7 into the hairpin. It, from this angle, it looked like Patrick was going to go deep. And actually, he does end up going deep way over that curve. Don't really want to do that. Joey actually has to lift a little bit there, which you typically wouldn't have to do. Opening up the final corner for himself very nicely. However, car number 16 takes a pretty solid line through here for what it is. Turning in really early, still getting the power down. A little bit of sliding, uh, but both of them with really good runs. As they cross on to lap number 12, coming through corner number 1. This is what separates men from boys, and uh, this is my worst corner, so... 
that says about me what it says about me. Card number 14 is falling off of Joey at this point. Joey is in a very good position here, opening up the corner a bit more than card number 16 ahead. He should have a better run into the, or onto the straight, uh, Parabolica straight, whatever, soaking up the slipstream all of the way through here. And uh, it looks like he's kind of far back, but honestly, with this slipstream, like four tenths at the beginning of this straight could be dive bomb territory by the end of it. Uh, honestly, like six tenths could be if you get a good enough run. And sure enough, here he comes up the inside. Car number 16 allowing space. Joey taking that absolutely gorgeously for that inside line. 16 losing uh, quite a bit of time trying to regain right behind Joe or re rejoin right behind Joey and is actually almost under pressure from car number 14 now going into the stadium section and he actually is car number 14 is looking for the move up the inside of 16 not quite gonna make it work side by side a little bit of contact and never mind he is going to make it work albeit not in the cleanest manner it did work for him Joey is now able to pull ahead and by the time the final lap is wrapping up not much change we drove some consistent clean laps uh, only a couple of incidents points that race pretty happy with the cleanliness I suppose this week of my performances but man it, it was just the pace was not there and I mean it's a me problem it's a skill issue I just need to put more focus practice I think and that's something I really want to work on next week I was not happy with where the peak of my pace arrived because it wasn't good looking at I mean, we, we crossed in P6, Joey and P7. Congratulations to both of us. But bang, uh, Nicholas ahead of us once again, looking familiar up there. And I rating green, safety rating green. But the pace, man, the pace. This was just like, I was, I was not happy with this week. I think I need to go back to the drawing board with how I'm practicing and just do a little bit of a mental reset. Uh, hopefully come back stronger next week. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me, please check out my channel, some of my other videos there, and I bet you will enjoy those as well.